guys. Curse Trials Day 2. We got Oskaka versus Super J coming up for you guys. And while we've seen a lot of Druid, a lot of Shaman, a lot of similar lineups, I think this is the first time where we have what is very likely going to be an exact mirror match. What's your take on this? Uh, yeah, we, we did have similar classes multiple times over for um, our previous matches, but the interesting choice here is that Rogue seems to be a lot more popular than we thought. It's, in fact, very widely picked. Now, that shouldn't surprise some people, because when they look at guys like Super JJ, it's like he's a rogue player. Like, that's his favorite mm -hmm. thing, you know? Um, even some of these other people, like Oskaka, loves playing rogue. Is actually one of his decks for the World Championship run he made last November. Yep. So these, this shouldn't surprise some of these players who are really in love with that deck. Rogue is always more of a, a class that people associate higher skilled players with. Um, just because that's just... It's also like a masochistic thing. It's like once you're committed to rogue, you're just kind of there. It's, it's not really like a... An open relationship it's very exclusive so i feel like rogue is one of those uh, one of those decks where you see a lot of people like compare their plays to like some of the other actual rogue players it's, it's true like, it's totally i got that true. wrong i got that wrong i yeah. got that wrong it's like what is he doing and then he wins the game I'm like damn i got a lot left to learn it's, it's uh, so black and white with these guys they're so strongly opinionated super jj is always like yeah like he was he was we were sitting at gamescom and he was watching some plays, and he was just like, that's like 100% wrong. There's just no scenario where that's correct. And mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are very opinionated, of course. That's part of what makes them very uh, drawing as their personalities. But uh, I'm curious if uh, they've got any tr th anything tricky up their sleeve. Because I also know Super JJ's, uh, you know, one of his big claims to fame on the ladder was playing Maligos Miracle Rogue. Um, and not necessarily the oil variant that people are tweaking these days to, to play in this tournament. Yeah, um... I think that can work. I've been on the receiving end of a Malagos combo from a rogue recently, and it didn't feel very good. And uh, most of the cards involved are uh, legal in the in the, the semi-standard format that uh, we have in this tournament. And we'll have to see. Um, one thing I am maybe a little bit surprised is there's been like no variation on shamans, right? Like the only kind of tweaks came from Forsen, and his deck didn't really pull through. Um, with the use of the unbound elementals, while I thought that was pretty good, I thought I thought we'd probably see like a mid range shaman or something. I mean, most of the good mid range shaman cards are classic and TGT. That's when they got like the biggest buffs. So, I mean, you you kind of have most of the structure of the better cards involved. So, I thought someone would maybe take a shot, but uh, we've seen a lot of shamans and we've seen none of those. So. Well, if uh, Archon and crew really wanted it, they should have invited Ping Ping Ho. Oh, uh, yes! Yes! Oh, what? Thunderbluff oh, Valley. How did you know? <laughs> All right. It's before I didn't you? <laughs> no idea. <It's> odd. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. I can't believe you predicted it. You're a god. How did that even happen? It's like, okay, well, you know, first of all, Midrange Shaman, the reason why I would have counterpointed you was that even though, you know, it feels like it'd be pretty good against Druid, um, it's susceptible to a lot of other things. Like, if your opponent's playing aggressive stuff, Midrange Shaman generally struggles against those fast burn things. And if you look at in the past, it was like Hunter, and Aggro Shaman is taking that place as the Hunter deck. So I, I feel like on paper the aggro shaman would get the edge over the mid range shaman, but maybe Super JJ takes the approach like I don't care, maybe I just, and it's like and try to see if I can win other matchups and just let the aggro shaman through. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it is uh, it is it is Super JJ that I think is bringing the uh, the mid range shaman. I know that he's been. One of the players in recent times that has brought like new deck lists to tournaments, and it has suited him very well on like the turn of uh, metas and expansions. Yep. I think I think he he did very well. I think he actually won one of the, one of the seat story cups on the back of like Reno Freeze Mage or something. And uh, are you, you know, are you that... trolling me, Crip? <laughs> no. Oh no, you're okay, everyone. No, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I thought you were just poking fun at me because. Uh... Cause he, yeah, because he, he beat me in the tournament with that freeze mage. Uh, oh, play. okay, <laughs> to, yeah. To get to the top board, so, but yeah. Yeah, he did. It was really cool. And that was like the first playable wing of um, 
the League of Explorers, and he took a big gamble in doing it. And that's what makes JJ a really cool and compelling player, right? He's willing to take these big risks, like playing a mid-range shaman. What this deck is dead. We had a moratorium a few months ago in honor of our friend Thrall, who is now being called Rexar for short. But uh, oh god, that juggles huge. That's insane. This game is done. <laughs> We're gonna see more of this mid-range shaman soon enough, I believe. No, no, no. He's got the totem golem. Oh no, he's he's overloaded. No, he's got oh, nothing. God. Got nothing. Yeah. Okay, okay. He, he has the, the Argent text. Squire. Yeah, nothing. He's gonna get. He's gonna get feral spirited. That juggler's gonna do like another twelve damage. Oh man, it's brutal. Yeah, and everything's like lining up really well. The Feral Spirits on turn three, exactly. So that way on turn five, you have the mana to play Doomhammer. Yep. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This this is like the most crushed world that we're going to see a player get by this Shaman deck. But but to be fair, this is kind of exactly what we were talking about. Like This is probably its worst matchup. And maybe JJ's like, okay, screw it. I, I'm just going to try to catch the Druid with it. And if the shaman wins, the shaman wins. I can't really beat flame that tongue, shaman. Flame tongue, flame tongue, flame tongue, no. I don't know if flame tongue actually would even save him much. Oh, well, it would. Unless he like picks up lightning minions. storm. Oh, that's, that's a pretty reasonable card. Okay. Hmm. If he rolls high on some of this lightning storm stuff, he might be able to climb back into it because you would. You have to be imagining yeah. that if you can't play heal bot, you have a healing wave in the deck, right? No, like that. Like, look at that damage, dude. That's ten damage this turn. The healing wave negates the doom hammers effect, man. You just heal back up <laughs> to, to twenty. Yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe he's he's gonna have to get a ridiculous lightning storm, and then he's gonna have to taunt in front and hope that um, that Oskaka never draws any relevant spells. And if all of those things happen, then yeah, maybe. Never say never. Oskaka, um, by the way, has been flying a little bit under the radar just because he went so hard into the BlizzCon World Championships that he decided to take a little bit of a breather and not go too hard into other tournaments. I know people were expecting to see him a little bit more. He, he did play in a few other things. Um, oh, you know, spell the damage! That's oh, a board clear! That, that's a board, board clear! Here it is! Oh, he fought every single one! <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So he, you know, now he has Defender of Argus, and he has Feral Spirits. Uh, yeah, this, this the, really the Doomhammer can't get through very conveniently, because of Divine Shield as well, you have to ping that. Mm -hmm. He's on 4 mana, so he can't do any, any shenanigans like double um, double Feral Spirit. I think I think Argus is probably the best play, uh, and I My think you want to hit it on the Totem, Argus. not uh, sorry, the Spell Damage Totem, not the, not the Mana Tide. You want to yeah. keep drawing. Crap, the dream is alive! Two feral spirits? He needs elementals. Oh my goodness. That's nasty. That's, That's lethal. lethal. <laughs> <laughs> your dream was killed while you were giving oh. your speech. Oh god, is this what they sang about when, the, when the Anne Hathaway was singing in Le Miz? It's it specifically this scenario, I think, she had in mind. My god, exact lethal! Not even, not even a close. Yeah. Yeah. But he he had it. He had like the two feral spirit wolves. Uh, he had you know an opportunity to add some burst with rock biter. I assume he has doom hammer in his deck. Well, oh my goodness. I think there's only one way that he would stay alive that game, and that was if instead of the spell damage totem on the turn before, he got a taunt totem, and then he Argus the mana tide. But what if he? That he would have to have rolled. Oh, actually, actually, if he Argus the Manatide, he would have stayed alive. Yeah, you're right. But who yeah. do you play specifically around Lightning Bolt, Earthshock, and Rockbiter? It has to be those three because Crackle's no longer an option. Right. right. But but if you ask Chat, they would. So Chat would have just <laughs> played New much better. Yeah, they they, they would have known. Too. Plays from Super JJ, man. I don't even get it. <laughs> All right, another mirror match here. It's going to be Rogue. Uh, we see the Auctioneer on one side, the Malagos on the other. I'd imagine where there's Malagos, there are more Auctioneers. Uh, so we're probably going to see very similar uh, play styles from these Rogue decks, even if uh, there's only Malagos in one of them. Yeah, pretty awesome to see some Rogue mirrors. It just takes me back to the old days 
where there's so much small nuance. With this matchup specifically, uh, a lot of the early game damage does matter because very quickly you're going to have to evaluate how you race your damage. Um, because there's a big difference between eviscerating minion and eviscerating face set up for lethals. You also know healbot's not really in the equation, so the range to heal has only been limited by farseers, and there's not even lothep to cut off your opponent's turn for guarantee setups. So the dynamic of the matchup has changed pretty dramatically, and one of the most interesting things that you'll ever hear a rogue player talk about is attacking on turn two with the dagger. Um, there's a lot of debate on like whether or not you do or don't. Uh, and like one time I got a five minute explanation from RDU about why you would and why you wouldn't in specific Rogue vs. Rogue. It's, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Oskaka did a snap call to, to attack there. Um, I, don't, I don't really think, yeah, I don't really think there's much reason to play SI. Yeah, the, the SI, um, you know, the Phantom Knives is not really that impactful this early on, and even then, late stage of the game, it's not. I think drawing is much more impactful. You already have Gadget Sand, you want to hit preps, your other cards like the Tomb Pillager on turn 4. Um, doesn't have it, but he definitely has options here to use the Farseer to just get back a yeah. little bit of board. You want to use the Farseer here, you want to save the SI because the uh, you know, SI is a little bit more tempo now. It's going to give you more tempo when you actually played and redeem its full value. Mally Ghost comes in the hand, which is just just too early. You'd rather have Mally Ghost when you have like Emperor already prepared and you draw pretty deep in your deck. God, that's, that's a pretty crazy hand on Super JJ side, though. Oh, and the con the conceal actually makes it like equally crazy here. Yeah, the, I, the only way you can get past it is through a blade flurry, and it has to have spell power usually. Although JJ has two deadly poisons, so it's probably not as necessary. Yeah, this guy's toast. I wonder if JJ is going to feel provoked to blade flurry now. He still doesn't have like. Here's also a really interesting thing. Is that you still aren't completely sure what kind of rogues your opponents are on, mm -hmm. which I changes like that dynamic a lot. I think the Farseer is definitely the the play here. Oh, no, play flurry time. That means the gadget thing gets much better, but it's still one turn away. He needs a prep. He's gonna Azure Drake instead, unless he picks up the prep right now. <gasps> oh I think it's still God. Azure Drake though. No, I think it's still Azure Drake. What? Oh, he just used Flurry and Deadly Poison! How else is he going to deal with it? He can't Lotheb. No, I don't like it. I think I think you wait one more turn. The Azure Drake gives you a draw. Waiting one more turn gives you another draw. The chance to get like super ridiculous combos is so much higher if you just wait one more turn. I think I think the payout is worth it. What if you give your opponent the turn to set up, though? Like... If it was Gadget Sand. Well, that's the thing. If, if if you play Azure Drake here, Super JJ is is almost certainly going to do his own Gadget Sand and then prep Eviscerate, and then you can actually punish that. Uh, yeah, assuming it worked out conveniently that way. Mm. Um, and not like, you know, prep, conceal, and then like backstab stuff. But uh, And now we see that JJ is at a pretty big disadvantage because Oskaka is able to get his out much quicker. And he only plays the Farseer. He's going to try to keep his gadgets in uh, in his hand right now so that way he can get better stuff. Uh, just hand into Deadly Poison, etc. Mm -hmm. With that sieve as well, there's going to be a lot of draws. So going to pick up a handful of cards here this turn. And this is not looking good at all for JJ right now. Mm. I don't like the Eviscerate, though. I kind of want to see a Cold Blood and then just try to draw into something else. Like a Prep or... Um, I don't know. I just don't like the Eviscerate. I, I think it doesn't work all that well. But it does get, make it convenient to play other spells. and Or even Van Cleave, if you want to just... Load up six six. Like if you drew a second gadget stand, for example, it gives you expanded options. We haven't actually played much in huh. terms of spells. This Van Cleef, I think, is going to be a six six. The Brotherhood shall. Eight 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 eight. No six six. Okay. 
you know. But it's okay. He has two Drakes and a Thanos, so he's still going to draw deeper into his deck. The thing is that he didn't go truly off with this turn because he hit two minions out of four cars. So not exactly the most fortunate of draws for Oskaka. Speaking well, of draws, there's a couple of ways to do it this turn. Uh, what, yeah, what do you Super like JJ, Super JJ is one mana short of right. doing everything he wants. But if he draws a, a backstab, it's, uh, it's going to work out. That if he draws a prep, it's going to work out. Well, it looks like he's going to be willing to take a little bit of extra damage here. Yeah, prep, eviscerate. You know, the the Harrison Jones destroying the weapon is also highly relevant. Rogue, a lot of its tempo that it can gain is through the weapons, and if you want to spend two mana to reestablish it, it's a little painful at this stage. And this is a, like, don't be fooled by the 23, 25 health marks. Um, yeah, when someone dies, they're going quickly. down immediately. Yeah, they're going so quickly, like, to one way or the other, so... Mm. Well, sap Harrison. <laughs> sa I mean, Harrison takes turn to develop, so if you sap it, that gives you room to play six mana. I don't know if I like that, because the Tomb Pillager into Thanos is not exactly imposing. Well, you could do, um, yeah, sap Thalnos. You Cobla your Thalnos, and then, oh, Van Cleef, Cleef. Cleef. Oh, no, I, Just I, all I in. That. I hate that. <laughs> No, I don't know. It's definitely a tough play here. It's so interesting that he's playing the Cold Blood as well. That's, that's just, This is exactly one of the reasons why Cold Blood is just very awkward and not really consistent a lot. Um, but if you can get it on like your targets to end the game, it has such explosive potential compared to the Maligos version. So they're already splitting up their differences there. Hmm. Okay, he has two gadget sands, so I think he feels comfortable being able to toss out a shiv here. And Van Cleef by itself is not uh, game ending if you use it up. Backstab's not bad either. Yeah, that's just a redraw. And a prep, that's not bad at all. Now, the sequencing is important here. You definitely don't want to uh, prep first, as you would normally want to. Unless you have faith that you pick up sap number two immediately after, but that's highly unlikely. Uh, even then, I think a backstab moving forward is pretty pretty worthless. So many options. Might be. I mean, sometimes if you can draw out the sap, you can just Mally Ghost backstab, and your opponent has no way to deal with it, has to ignore it. Because mm. Mally Ghost has so much health, so if you can draw out both saps from your opponent, it usually means you can just plop Mally Ghost if you're safe enough, and uh, and they have to go and all in. Sapped. Mm. Well, actually, no, I, he might draw out the, the second sap here. Are you talking about Oskaka or JJ? Yeah, Oskaka might, might sap the auctioneer. Okay, well, you know, I, I'm still a fan of playing the Azure Drake and then Same maybe options. even the Tomb Pillager and then trading into the gadget soon. I, I think the, the damage that you're trying to raise with your opponent right now is not relevant. Because 19 is still just as high as 30. Oh, no, there it is. That's the second sap. It's cold blood time. Oh, man. He's going super aggressive. Oh, my goodness. So he's going to try to end the game here, but if a second sap is, dealt, if, is found of some capacity... Oh, uh, Ma Malaga's uh, backstab, exactly what you mentioned, does deal with it perfectly well. And... Um... Oskaka is going to have to win the game on the spot, and that's going to be hard to do. He doesn't no, have a sap can. anymore. Yeah, he, exactly. He might be able to. I just don't really see it, but it's it's rogue, man. Like, it's, I'm sure there's some way here. Yeah, Azure Drake still could pick up something. What if like what if he just whipped out sabotage out of nowhere, just completely wrecked him? Uh, super JJ would be super salty. Okay, so he's gonna try to just go all in and race him, but you gotta heal is... here, I think. Oh, oh. Mally goes preemptively getting onto the board. There's, there's no, no damage yet, though. but yeah, there's there's gonna be a few draws here. Yeah, uh, at least anywhere. at least two off the deadly poison, the prep. One flurry is just going to rock his world. Oh my! Oh God. man. 
with an added bonus of maybe even picking up Eviscerate and doing 9 damage there, which would be lethal. Oh, no spell though. Oh, he's so close! Oh, alright, well, how much damage does Kaka have? He has 4? Oh, oh my god! It. It. He's got it! Wow, what a draw! <laughs> the world champ pulls out when he needs it the most! Oh man, JJ is not going to be happy about that this one. He got Malik for an entire turn. Yeah, his draws were terrible off that auction oh. here. Like three, three mid-range minion draws. Yeah, the second gadget sand, Tomb Pillager, Value Teacher. And that means Oskaka is up two nil. So yeah, that's a corner. That's a really good start when your last deck is Druid. <laughs> Drew it up against well, mid range shaman doesn't is not actually that great of a matchup for the druid in the past. Maybe it's changed a lot though. We have because mid range shaman hasn't come back for so long. You know how it matches up against the decks that it used to be good against could be completely different. So it's true, but I don't I don't think Malagos Rogue is particularly good against druid either. So I think it's it's a pretty big climb, and we we have to. We have to have like the, the a different frame of thinking I here. I think Empire. just uh, individually, the Druid deck is just the strongest deck in the tournament, right? So even if it pairs up well, we have to consider that the Druid deck is just on a on a different power level. I agree um, on the surface, but it's not like this rogue can't sneak in a win. Uh, it's got by a teacher, so it's not completely dependent on just having Mali goes to end oh, it. Done. And I, I, the lists also vary. Sometimes it's just one Violet Teacher because you have so many other spells like Shivs that you don't really have room for other 4-drops. And even then, the best 4-drops are eliminated like Pilot Shredder, Heal Bots, etc. Mm -hmm. Rogue's on coin, so that's already a big deal. And the, But the biggest problem is that Druid doesn't have anything to do on turn 2 or turn 3 for now. One Innervate could probably change it, but yeah, yeah Innervate would probably be the best cool. card. It's it's that moment where you want to Innervate a 5 drop before playing the 4. It's perfect. Um, that will do. That will yeah, do. Yeah, it'll do, but um, I guess I guess it's still a little bit late, because now you get to proactively go for the Tomb Pillager. And uh, the reason why you want to go for the Tomb Pillager is because it challenges the most stats for the five mana, plus you get the coin back, which is a strong investment anyways. Harrison Jones drawing two more cards for the Druid, very powerful stuff. All right. Very proactive Harrison's. Yeah, I like it. Ah, oh, man, do, do you want to keep your Tomb Pillager alive so that you can have board tempo. I, I, but you don't, if you sap like Harrison, you're just gonna get uh, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, there's there's no way that you can deal with it otherwise. I think just trading is fine. Or just going face is fine as well. Yeah. That's true. If he picks up a value trade by killing the 3-3, you still have the SI7 agent. With Shiv. Shiv SI7 agent is surprisingly effective next turn when I look at it. The real decision is, this... is on Oskaka here. If he wants to start dominating the board... With a savage combatant, or if you want to dominate the uh, the, the curve, the rest of the uh, or the next few turns at least by playing the emperor, um, I, f I feel like the emperor is maybe a little bit stronger, just a little bit. Hmm. I'm liking the savage combatant as well. But, uh, emperor is almost too hard to pass when you have seven cards in hand, mm -hmm. uh, one of them being savage roar. You have so much potential to end the game, and ultimately, because you want to combo Rogue before they get a chance to do anything, I, I, I'm definitely in favor of that. Shiv SI is only 3 damage, so it's not the clean removal you're looking for. Again, you don't want to spend your turn trading too much, you want to preserve your board as the Rogue. I think a Sap here is, is fine as well. Oh, okay. Very aggressive Pick up this here. Coin. Very aggressive. I, I like it. You know, one of, you're not going to win off the back of Gadgetzan drawing yeah, one more card. You're going to win off of the board getting repetitive damage, uh, and then Gadgetzan being able to finish it probably off. Also, 
You probably also want Saf against the Ancient of War. Like, that's been in almost every single Druid list that we've seen so far. Maybe actually every single Druid list we've seen so far. No Black Knight yet. I guess no I, Black uh, Knight. I've been wrong about that one. I thought someone would bring it. Well, what, what, uh, do you play Savage Combatant now? You have enough to clear the board that way. Savage yep. Combatant, Hero Power, and a Wrath. But you do know that's Mally Ghost. I mean, you've gotten some pretty good information. So it's like you're less afraid of things like uh, big board tempo stuff with, and then sprinting to refill the hand. You just have to worry that your opponent has a gadget sand and ultimately gets like the conceals. This play is pretty good. Yep, clears the board. Um, there is going to be an answer here from uh, Super JJ. Oh man, that's one of the best cards you could have asked for here. Because he didn't really have very good play this turn otherwise. And now he gets one mana Shiv. Shiv has been unnerfed, Crip. <laughs> Nerf. Nerf. So many of these rogue cards have been nerfed. Um, like Backstab, Shiv, SI7. Mm -hmm. um, Headcrack was nerfed, by the way. Yeah, Conceal's been nerfed as well. Conceal. Conceal was zero, right? Yeah. Or, and or was it, it was forever? Oh, uh, it, was it one mana and... Was it no, permanent it was zero, stealth? I think it was zero mana for sure. Um, you think it was zero mana me permanent me stealth? Oh, jeez. I thought it was zero mana one turn stealth. Yeah. I really like this play. I like going face because he doesn't have heal bots. There's no ways you can really stop him from doing double Drew the Claw charge. Or even... Uh, Savage Combatant, Hero Power, Drew the Claw, so he can conserve his burst if he needs to, but uh, right now, JJ is on a one turn to win. And with one mana remaining, I don't really see what he can do. Or sorry, two mana remaining after the, the Gadget's in. He's got a shift face, uh, but it's looking likely like it's the end of the series. Yeah, like... He has to kill him, right? Yeah. And this is a good application of Force of Nature Savage War because so many people are used to seeing it as the finish. Right, threw in the towel there. He had he had a few more uh, draws and combos and stuff, but I think realizing that there's there's just no way to pull out a way uh, to not lose next turn. You just yep. keep it up. 3 0. Um, not what I expected from uh, our first mirror match, in terms of classes at least. It turns out it wasn't quite the mirror match we were expecting. Not at all, but, uh, <laughs> Very dominant performance from Oskaka. Oskaka will be advancing to the winner's round, but we still have one more preliminary match to go. It will be Life Coach versus Zele. And, uh, you know, with that match, we... we would have then seen the complete list of what all the players have brought to the tournament, and uh, yeah, what do you, what do you think so far? Uh, you think uh, you think there's maybe a place with mid range shaman or the shaman. one of decks or? Oh my god, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna take an honor. I'm gonna pour one out for the mid range shaman in the middle of the break, Crip, because that that one was just that was, we we got our time machine and it went way back. <laughs> That was a throwback yeah. deck. It's, it's Thursday, right? Throwback Thursdays? You just saw one. Mid-range yep. shaman. Just like the yeah, last yeah, time we played it, right? Yeah. Just like the last time we played it. gets absolutely <laughs> mercilessly crushed by aggro decks. Just like the good old days. <laughs> just like the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Super JJ, for that trip down memory lane. But you know what? He's not eliminated. Uh, he will be playing the loser of this match. Uh, coming up here, Life Coach versus Olay. So stay tuned. Uh, we want to give a shout-out to our sponsors as well. Uh, the Curse Network, uh, Geek Fuel, uh, Hearth Pode, as well as the Innkeeper, uh, which for people who's coming into the stream a little bit late, uh, we're talking about it. It's a tool uh, made by the folks at Hearth Pone that lets you sync your card collection, um, helps spotting what cards you're missing when you're building the decks. So that way it's really useful because, you know, you, we're getting more deck slots eventually, but right now you're still stuck with nine. So for the meantime, check it out if you guys really want to continue to help yourselves while uh, building your decks pretty effectively. In the meantime, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, our fourth match and the final match of the preliminary. Stay tuned.